hi roman and karan absolute pleasure meeting you both and welcoming you to this series uh really looking forward to a very interesting and uh, hopefully insightful conversation with both of you when i was doing a little bit of a research about your company uh because i don't live in india and i'm a little removed uh from the local situation there when i was reviewing i had to look at some of the numbers two times or even three times to make sure that i got the numbers right and the one which caught my eye was that your company valuation has grown 10 times in the last 18 months i almost fell off my chair and i said wow this is the new india which is fantastic and fascinating so kudos to you both for really steering the company to where it is today so the first thing i was actually uh, wanting to share here is i call something uh, which is the fifth paradigm of marketing now marketing was being practiced since antiquity and it was continuously evolving and when a few powerful technologies typically two at a time when they come in the field of marketing and the field of business gets disrupted and it goes to the next paradigm so we had three disruptions so far and we are in the fourth paradigm of marketing and we are about to be disrupted by an unprecedented level uh, uh which is like about 24 technologies whether it is ai ar vr you call it of metaverse blockchains drone deliveries 3d printing 5g telecommunications autonomous cars wearables internet of things the list goes on and on and on and each one of these is capable of individually disrupting the field of marketing in particular and overall business in general and now just imagine when there is a confluence of these 24 technologies coming at us like a tsunami that is going to be unprecedented disruption and it is not a hyperbole it is actually going to be that way now what these technologies do is on the one hand there is a proliferation of data and of course there are significant shifts in the culture when you look at this scenario what happens is when more technology comes in and when there is proliferation of data and easy access to good data the field of uh, business becomes very democratized which means even a startup or a small company can very effectively fight against the so called giants with the deep pockets and established legacies that's a beauty and in that situation marketing is going to play a key role to differentiate the company to really stand out ahead of the rest and to be able to succeed and thrive into the future now against that context when i was looking at your company and i was thinking here is a company started as a complete startup in a new field which means you are also in the business of creating a new market not just capturing an existing market and your scaling like i have mentioned is huge 10 times in the last 18 months so uh, roman if i were to ask you the first question which is when you look at the scaling of a company the scaling of a company is not exactly the same as building of a brand there are two different things and i started asking myself is this company scaling purely on a volumetric basis and valuation basis or is it also building brand you are already doing ipl sponsorship which for a relatively new entrant it's a big deal you have got your tagline around cracking the game which is pretty interesting and cool and i have seen a number of your videos and your ads uh, which are extremely contextually relevant they are engaging they are very insightful and current particularly congratulations to you on that now what i want to ask you is uh, roman firstly how are you looking at your brand building even as you are scaling like there is no tomorrow yeah uh, thanks raja uh, like when it comes to an academy's brand like we have been uh, very very conscious about it uh, what we want this uh, an academy brand to represent uh, basically from day one uh, we wanted it to become like a global brand it was never about getting restricted to india or a particular geography or a particular demography from day one it was about uh, creating a best platform where we help anyone to crack any goal based learning so initially we started out with some test prep examination then we are right now in 50 plus test prep then we basically moved to k12 now for job so basically like if you go by our tagline which is let's crack it so it fundamentally we believe that anyone can crack any goal using an academy as a platform now goal can be 
either you are like trying to get into a college or you are trying to get a better job or you are trying to get better marks it can be basically any goal so an academy's brand is always about creating the best possible platform creating the best possible experience for the learner as well as the educator we obsess over it what it represents uh, like qualities like uh, perseverance uh, discipline uh, which will actually help you not only to just crack your exam or your goal but it also helps you in life so yeah like uh, these are some of the things and uh, like always being a pioneer uh, in education not just uh, like sort of uh, copy pasting things from here and there like there are a lot of iconic brands like uh, nike and apple uh we also want to be iconic but we want to create our own niche uh uh like uh, and for that like we are uh, very grateful to have karan at an academy he has been with us for almost 2 years now uh he is the first non founder to become a partner at an academy so like uh, uh like we have like really taken off our brand in last 2 years right? the goal is always to like create a like brand which outlives me which outlives the founders which outlives the partner that's the goal behind an academy's brand uh, i think karan can add a lot more see this is in fact just before i jump to karan you know this is pretty fascinating right because most of the people who start a company their focus is single mindedly almost to make sure that the company is a having the right products that they're creating the right experience that they have the right logistics and distribution if the, it is relevant and in terms of scaling it and of course they have got accountability to the investors and so on where marketing investment comes typically it takes a secondary or a tertiary role and interestingly there are statistics which show that 90% of all startups have failed because they did not know how to market and how to do the right marketing which is pretty fascinating and uh, from your perspective as i see it you are sort of embracing marketing right from the beginning and for a hardcore marketer like me that's absolutely music to my ears and it's a delightful to hear that but here is a question that i have got for karan so uh, as i said you have already got a ton of marketing that you are doing which is terrific and honestly i must say that uh, the quality of execution the concepts themselves they're pretty interesting now when you are looking and competing for resources obviously because roman and the other co-founders do not have unlimited funds they always have to prioritize where they're going to deploy their capital how are you convincing them to say yeah, i need so many million more dollars for a sponsorship of ipm or i want so much more for my advertising campaign etc what typical pulls and pushes you have i'll not believe you if you tell me that it is a tension free stress free cake walk that money is flowing your way just because you're creating great campaigns wish life for a bed of roses but certainly it is not so for marketers tell me what is the kind of dialogue that you have between yourself and roman how does it go how do you manage to get him over the line um I, i'm honestly going to say it's it's not too difficult uh, precisely what you're saying it, it's it's actually not difficult so uh, i think the founders are believers of marketing um i'll tell you one thing that that gets us over the line always uh, raja is that uh, you know the the marketing vision and the business vision uh, remains constant so we are always hand in hand uh, we are always working towards the same goal Uh, of democratizing learning across the country making quality education accessible to all um and any campaign that we do any any marketing uh, exercise that we go through with or any dollar that we spend as long as it's aligned with this vision uh, there isn't much of a back and forth and and a pull uh, but if you're just doing something you know for the sake of it or it doesn't have the purpose or the meaning or the heart behind it uh, uh, we ourselves don't push it through or or kind of go through it uh, you know as a marketing unit so we are always aligned with the business vision it's it's focused on on what we need to communicate to the learners uh, one thing that we are all uh, very wary and aware of is uh, the life of a student is not very easy it's it's always challenging it's it's filled with failures uh, filled with obstacles and and rejections uh, so we've taken that route of you know you, you spoke about let's crack it even when we built that campaign the let's plays a huge role in that because it's not about you crack it or you will crack it it's about let's do it together so okay. hence the let's um so every time we plan a campaign every marketing dollar every every uh, rupee spent or or every dollar spent uh, as long as it's aligned with the business vision it's it's in focus uh, or you know with the company's vision uh, it's fairly easy to push it through uh, of course there are metrics that we track from you know growth and and uh, return on investment and and uh, you know 
typical parameters that we you know look at as a marketer. Uh, but the first step is to to ask yourself why are we doing it? Uh, does it match or, or marry the purpose of the company and the vision? Uh, if it does, uh, then it's fairly easy to move forward. Got it. That's not only a good answer, but it's also a smart answer. So, but let me just take it to the next one. So back to you, Karan, which is uh, you successfully transitioned to be a partner from being a CMO. Uh, kudos to you and congratulations to you for that. It's always delightful to see when marketers are advancing and really realizing their full potential because marketers are not just functional specialists, but they are quintessential business leaders who connect the dots across the entire ecosystem of the company and the consumers. Right now, when you are looking at all this investment at this stage in your company's uh, uh, life cycle, so to speak, how are you balancing between performance marketing and brand marketing? Now, before you answer, I just want to state a couple of points. One is in my own experience, I have seen companies when they are focused on marketing and they are looking to give a believable, a credible ROI, return on investment on the investment that's being put in the easiest path to demonstrate is performance marketing. So you say, here is my funnel. And at the top of the funnel, that is what I'm creating and how the conversions are happening and how renewals, if it is applicable, how they are happening. So the entire life cycle you go through and it's very easy to measure and very easy to correlate. On the other hand, when you look at building a brand, it's, uh, it's not so easily quantifiable, nor are the effects immediately evident. So you have got actually that little bit of a fuzziness in brand metrics, if you were. Uh, and the thing is, it's easy to say that both brand and performance don't have to be mutually exclusive. As you're building perf a performance, we are also focusing on brand or vice versa. So that's a standard, very good answer, very smart answer. But I want you to really tell me what you think, how do you approach between these two? Like for example, if you say, I was delighted when Roman had mentioned in his opening speech that we are not just an Indian company, we want to be a global brand, which is brilliant. Now on that particular line, if you were to see, he's focused on brand. So probably it'll be an easier sell. The question is, how are you approaching the challenge between brand building and performance, uh, uh, what you call marketing uh, in an integrated fashion, but with a different focus? Uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Sure. Uh, I think they go hand in hand, uh, Raja. I think they're both equally important. Um, I feel for a business to scale and succeed, uh, you know, in a large, large manner, uh, you cannot live without, uh, you know, the other. So I think both uh, are very, very important in their own ways. And they both play a definitive role in, in you know, the success and growth of a brand. Um, you know, brand is not uh, not an abstract concept, you know, concept. It, it, it defines, uh, you know, the business, it, it puts the product out there, it conveys a message, it builds trust. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a very important uh, metric to kind of follow and chase uh, at all points. Uh, a simple example that I would like to put out is seeing a performance uh, ad or a digital ad of a brand that you have no recall of or, or any sort of presence versus seeing, uh, you know, an ad of a brand that you recognize well, trust, and probably, uh, you know, they've conveyed their message clearly uh, through the ad campaign or a brand campaign. Uh, the impact of the performance campaign goes up uh, significantly. Uh, so I think both play a significantly important role in their own way. Uh, both complement each other. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of focus on one and leave the other out. Both are equally important. And uh, if if both engines are firing well uh, and planned, uh, you know, with with planned tactfully, uh, I think they'll deliver the results for the brand. Thumbs up to you for that. Fantastic, uh, Roman. Turning to you. You know, I was reading the material and I wanted to come well prepared for this uh, discussion. And uh, some of the things that I have seen actually surprised me in a very positive way. When you are actually looking at creating this ecosystem of students on one side and the uh, teachers on the other side, uh, and I learned that you are actually giving stock options to the teachers, which is so visionary and so, I would say, uh, ahead of its time. You know, you would have thought companies like Uber would have given stock options to their drivers or stuff like that. You know, the success of your ecosystem depends on having a motivated and highly skilled and competent teachers, which is brilliant. So one thing which stood out to me is saying that it's, it's terrific that you're looking at connecting teachers and students with the medium of technology under the umbrella of a powerful brand that builds trust. 
The question is, how come you don't call yourself a student first company? Because at the end of the day, you exist for the success of the students. The teachers exist for the success of the students. The technology is there for you to bring your mission to life, et cetera. So when you look at from that perspective, uh, you know, I don't know if the article really did justice to the full interview or not, but it stood out to me saying that a company which is so focused and already so consumer oriented at this point in time, with the kind of campaigns you are coming, you understood the pulse of the consumer so well. How come you don't take the philosophy of students first? Yeah, uh, so it's uh, like, see, it's a platform. It's a two-sided marketplace and academy. Uh, to answer your question, like uh, if you go to the genesis of online platforms, education had already existed in offline form for at least last 30, 40 years. Uh, these uh, educators were teaching. So when we came about in 2015 and when we started, it was all about bringing this supply uh, to a huge demand. So 90 to 95% of students in India and across the globe are not able to access the quality teachers. So it was earlier about how to get these high quality educators who are concentrated in certain cities or certain pockets of uh, like uh, regions like uh, Delhi, Jaipur, Kota, like they're just concentrated in five, six cities. So we basically wanted to become the best place for an educator to work. And uh, that's how we started out. Like uh, we allowed them remote work. They never need to leave their home. And this is, I'm talking about 2015. This is like pre COVID. Now it's a norm. Uh, then we basically said that you get your referral incentives. Then we used to put them on billboards. Like before that, it was the brand, which used to go on billboards. Like right now, uh, Karan is running a campaign where like hundreds of our educators are on billboards across the country. So when they see that, uh, so they are in our front newspapers, they are in our performance ads. And uh, as you rightly said, like Gaurav had announced TSOPs, which is like uh, stock options to our educators. So uh, basically we give them complete operational support. So yeah, that's how we started. But obviously like the vision is that uh, we need to ensure that as I rightly like earlier said that learner experience is at the core of an academy. Every single decision which... Uh, product team will make or the business team will make will be about the learner. Uh, they need to have their entire journey, their social environment, uh, gamification, like you should use our product. The gamification which is used for the learner at an academy is like uh, really, really 10x better than anything else I have seen. Uh, they get motivated by seeing each other's journey. They get uh, like, uh, they have like uh, life clearing products, one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions and so on and so forth. So at an academy, we like whenever we write our messages. So I keep the E of educator as capital and L of learner as capital. So it's always like both of them go hand in hand. It's not like it's an educator first company or a learner first company. I think it's uh, both of them are like two sides of the coin for us. And if we don't deliver learner outcomes, uh, like then like those educators are also not justified. So ultimately it has to lead to learner satisfaction and eventually into learner outcomes so that they can crack whatever goal they want to crack. Got it. So I think you'll have one new student and I'll ask my son to go ahead and check it out and enroll himself for this. Now, in fact, you know, when I'm looking at your own ecosystem, it reminded me a lot of what I do for my day job at MasterCard, right? So we also have started building an ecosystem of you know, 50, 60 years back with merchants on one side, the users on the other side, and we had the banks who were underwriting the risk and connecting the dots. And it's very important that you address all the three parts of the e ecosystem, which is sort of what is reminiscent to me when I was reading uh, your uh, approach that you are looking at the students as well as uh, the teachers. So you need to really appeal to both and put them together through effective technology, which seems to be working well. But talking of technology, and now and in India, there's this talk of essentially, uh, are you a company focused on India or are you focused on Bharat? and Bharat being the uh, rural uh, tier two, tier three cities, et cetera. Now I noticed that more than uh, in, in, the, in my uh, notes, more than 70% of your students are from tier two, tier three cities, right? Now in those kind of cities, when you're expanding, firstly, it's incredible getting distribution and uh, adoption in these kind of places, fascinating. But where they are challenged by technology on the one hand, the broadband width, bandwidth, is it broadband enough? Uh, and then you're talking about the kind of devices that the uh, students would have. How are you cracking that part of technology challenge? Got it. So uh, see, uh, from day one, like uh, our third co-founder, Himesh, like he's our CTO. 
so the technology has always been focused towards the like the like the people who are in tier 2 tier 3 towns who have limited internet access like when we started out there was no like geo revolution there were like 4g was still unheard of uh, i'm talking about 2015 very few people had it the android devices were not so ubiquitous as they are now uh, so even in those days uh, like the kind of uh, innovation we have done in delivering our content Like I still remember, like uh, we used to stitch the videos and the audio used to lay over it. So the size was like one tenth of what a normal uh, video will be. So I think at the end of the day, in at least in education, I can say what India wants and what Bharat wants is the same. Uh, like they want both of them want the best educators, both of them want the best learning experience, both of them want that the technology platform is very user friendly, and both of them want that ultimately it helps them to crack their goal. so our technology serves the uh, like the common minimum uh, agenda of every single one uh, whether it's from tier to town or from metropolitan city of delhi so and uh, ours has always been a technology first product and there are like two three reasons behind it uh, the way an academy world like if you see other tech players uh, they will have around 100 200 educators at max 300 400 educators uh, we have like thousands of educators like 10000 plus educators and uh, these uh, so you can't really solve like allow these 10000 educators to create content on a platform without solving for technology first so uh, by choice you have to be a technology first platform and till today like we are the only major edtech player which, which doesn't have a field sales like uh, if there's no like push based uh, sales so it's all like incoming people who are coming because they like the product they like the technology and they interact with the app and uh, that's how an academy progresses it's always technology first because that's how you become a global brand uh, if you are very heavy on like certain other things then uh, if you are not technology focused there is no way that you will be able to expand and let's say become an iconic brand over a, like decades got it got it that that's really uh, you know cool uh it sounds easier than uh, actually to implement i am sure but what you're accomplishing is really commendable now you have stated your vision you know many companies again start off and i, I repeatedly are mentioning it and that delights me when you're talking about you want to be an iconic brand into the future and you want to be and i saw some of the descriptions that were given you want to be the netflix of education you want to be the ten cent of india you're really thinking very 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 big can you just elaborate on your vision a little bit and then uh, current i would like to come to you and ask you after that how are you bringing that vision to life because i do believe that marketing is the one which in collaboration and coordination with everyone else will bring that vision totally to life so roman if you can start sure so i was having a discussion with gorov uh, like our co-founder and ceo and uh, when we discussed what we want this to become like it was always about uh, democratizing education that's how we started uh, democratizing in both the sense of the word whether like the 90% of the learners can't access the education and most of the edu- like smart people like you me others they are not teaching online like smart people like karan they are not teaching online so enabling the next set of educators and making it as a viable career option that is what uh, encompasses democratizing education that's how we started so now i think uh, there's still a long way to go but we have achieved a fair share of success in democratizing education so then like we changed our like uh, we changed the model 2 years ago in february 2019 to make it a subscription model what you said netflix of education now uh, in netflix of education every single possible goal uh, whether it's let's say playing chess or like preparing for k12 or preparing for a specific test to get into a college or to get a job so every single thing gets covered in there and uh, ultimately like to create the single largest consumer internet company out of india i think an iconic company which people can look up to i think uh, still uh, indian startup ecosystem is quite nascent i'll give it like 20 20 30 years that's it that's all its existence has been so really creating an iconic company which uh, like people can look up to and not just a copy paste model from silicon valley and like being pasted for some local solutions so that will be the vision so it started with democratizing education then becoming like the everything store so to speak uh, related to education every single thing related to education gets covered and ultimately to create the like the single biggest consumer internet technology company in india extraordinary and then global obviously a global brand yeah truly extraordinary so current how are you bringing it to life 
I think, uh, Raja, the, you know, the lure for short-term goals uh, and, and for quick gratification uh, can be detrimental. I think it's a slow, ongoing process. Uh, you know, and, and brand is all about compounding over time. So it's, 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 being about, it's about being consistent. It's about delivering this, you know, the, the business message or the communication time and again, efficiently. So uh, it's going to be an ongoing process. Uh, you know, the way we always look at it is work done in the past is in the past. So uh, we are always looking to what next. Um, you know, this vision of uh, taking education to, to everybody, taking learning to everybody, bringing uh, different kinds of uh, categories onto the platform, uh, like, like Roman said, you know, experts from different domains teaching. Uh, it's all about communication and conveying that message at the end of it. And that needs to be consistent, uh, you know, irrespective of the pivots we make. Uh, so I think instead of looking at it from a larger, you know, or, or saying that we're going to build a great wall, we're probably going to lay one brick at a time. Uh, and, and but play it as perfectly as we can and see where it takes us. So uh, I think that's the way uh, we would look at marketing. So every pivot that we make, every every uh, strategy that we change or or the vision that you know we we bring in uh, for marketing, it's going to be about laying that brick as perfectly as we can and communicating that message as perfectly as we can. Uh, and the consistency uh, should be maintained across uh, those spectrums through the years uh, and through the campaigns. Very good. Uh- one of the things when you look at brand and when you're building literally brick by brick, as you have said, current, which is terrific. Uh, and it is right. So long as there is clarity in terms of the vision, which you guys have abundantly clear vision uh, and to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Now, your growth has been both organic and you have also been acquiring a number of companies out there. So I believe you have got 10 companies that you have already bought so far. When you're buying a company, it has got its own brand equity. It has got its own set of uniqueness to it. When you're bringing that, how are you looking at your brand strategy? Is it like a, a house of brands where you have got an umbrella and they've got multiple brands under the rate, or you're looking like a branded house, like MasterCard, for example, is a branded house. We have just but one brand. And everything that we do will be sort of focused on it, which has been proven to be a more efficient way of building a brand as opposed to disperse your efforts in sustaining multiple brands. How are you looking at your branding strategy? Uh, I think it depends or varies from brand to brand. Uh, you know, that said, uh, you know, we would definitely want to bring everything under the Unacademy brand. Uh, the brand is very powerful. It has a lot of trust and love among the students and, and educators in the entire fraternity. Uh, you know, we've seen that uh, time and again, uh, you know, and, and I think the, the way to build it would be to kind of build an umbrella and have everything under that. Uh, so, so I would say the way we would look at these things, of course, would be case to case basis, uh, you know, time and again, again, one break at a time, but, uh, but in an ideal case scenario, I would want everything to be under the under academy brand. Got it. Got it. Uh, Roman, back to you. Uh, you have been talking about your global aspirations. Uh, and of course there are some Indian companies which have done a brilliant job of taking the brand and making it a true global powerhouse. Right, it happened mostly in the IT sector before, now it is going to other areas as well, like telecoms, et cetera. Now, from your perspective, uh, do you feel that you have the wherewithal in your brand to become a global brand? And are there things that you really look at saying that, you know what, for America, I have to do it in this way, for UK, I have to do it this way, and for Indonesia, it's a very different approach. Very broadly, I'm talking more from the point of creating a global appeal as opposed to specific uh, marketing strategy per se, because each marketing strategy is obviously dependent on the local market and how it resonates and so on. But overall, when you are thinking about globality and global expansion, how do you think about your brand? Would you want to be, for example, a top 10 brand in the world as an academy? And just elaborate a little bit more if you can think on the, along those lines. Sure. So, see, an academy cert- uh, to answer your question certainly has the wherewithal uh, to be the brand uh, across the globe in every single country. Uh, it's basically it will boil down obviously to some micro changes which you will have to do as per geography, which will current can address better. But in my view, see, an academy is not just like a platform where you go and you basically crack an exam. As like from small things like let's crack it, where current emphasized on the word let's. That it's not just you, you have to crack the exam. We are there to support you. We are there to help you in your goal. So we have always connected with our learners uh, beyond our product. It's not just limited to uh, an academy as a platform. Uh, like, uh, like it's always just like there is a feeling, there is an emotion when we talk about an academy that it's always there for me. 
and whatever problems i have i might run into uh, the brand is there to solve the problem for example in covid uh, in 2020 and 2021 a lot of exams got disrupted basically so the exams were supposed to happen in april they got happened in october and and a lot of learners were like petrified that what will happen because they have got a subscription which is about to end in may so in many of such cases we extended the subscription by like 3 4 months and sometimes we have given them like 3 months extra so that they can cover next exam cycle uh, we have launched multiple crash courses we paid educators more to just like teach for like 100 hours extra and so on and so forth so first point is that an academy connect with our really connect with our learners beyond the product it's not just a service which we are rendering to them uh second point is like we really really solve a pain point which exists like i have been through that cycle i have given two exams in my life uh, they are one of the top two most difficult exams in our country the neat and upsc and and this is just 10 years ago 2008 and 2013 and i'm like it didn't nothing existed online basically i was lucky enough to be born in certain like societies and cities where i was able to access them but i know 90% if i was born in some other geography then there is no way i would be sitting here and giving you this interview and this i'm just talking about 8 years ago so mm-hmm. like really there is a problem which exists and an academy tries to solve that problem and uh, the third thing which a brand really really needs is to stand for something and be consistent over a long period of time uh, karan was just mentioning about the power of compounding and how uh, it will take a long period of time and not like fall like falling in the lure of short term Uh, let's say incentives or uh, things like that so yes an academy certainly has the wherewithal because i truly believe in these three things that we really connect with our learners beyond the product we are actually trying to solve a problem uh, which is a huge huge pain point not just in india across the globe and we are quite consistent in what we stand for and that is how we will uh, continue to do over like next few years and next few decades i think karan can add uh, more to this on go ahead karan I, I'm completely in alignment with uh, with Roman. I think he's covered it all and and covered it really well. Uh, it's it's always about uh, you know what what we deliver ultimately to the students to our learners uh, and and how honestly we bring that to the table. Uh, and and I think uh, you know that's been the constant endeavor. Uh, and and uh, I think Roman summarized it beautifully. Got it. Now uh, shifting gears a little bit, many industries have benefited pretty substantially because of the pandemic. people could not go out and therefore everything became remote right whether it is remote working uh, whether it is remote entertainment remote learning of course remote everything right uh, remote shopping and so on so e-commerce for example took off at an unprecedented level during this pandemic and remote learning as well has so i'm sure that secular trend also has helped and you have beautifully positioned yourself to take advantage of that kind of a secular growth that was happening the question is post pandemic what is your view on what's going to happen to remote learning uh and uh do you see any shift in your business model or do you see any shift in your marketing strategies therefore um i think uh habits habits cannot be changed uh, raja i think they're built over a you know course of time uh, students are learning on the platform uh, we are st- we are seeing higher stickiness to the platform uh, you know we've seen a surge of traffic and flow uh, students coming on and 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 you know learning on the platform and and staying there for a longer time the amount of time they're spending uh, learning has jumped significantly uh, in the number of uh, watch minutes that we have has has kind of spiked uh, significantly so you know these habits are here to say uh, stay you know the once they experience the benefits of of the kind of uh, you know uh, interactive classes that we have live classes that we conduct uh we even have the voice feature now which which is in motion and and you know uh, students can interact raise a hand and interact with the educator so uh you know with all like roman said you know solving problems for them uh you know going to their doorstep uh digitally being present there uh you know solving everything that they uh, probably not had access to or for uh you know those habits are going to be hard to switch back and change uh, you know it's going to be very difficult uh, you know again to go back uh you know to normalcy as it was probably 2 years ago uh you know it's been the new normal for the last 2 years and i think it's going to stay that way uh, you know it's continuing to boom in that direction uh, you know we've had waves in india we've seen uh, spikes you know we've had lockdowns we've had uh, you know a fully functional country in the middle we've not seen a drop so i think uh, you know that growth is here to stay if anything it's going to probably increase you know multifold from here uh, and habits are going to be hard to reverse uh, you know from this point of time uh, in in fact at mastercard one of the things that i have recently done is launched Uh, a mastercard marketing institute right I, i have been a lifelong learner i still learn and every weekend 
every single weekend, I spend five hours learning. Either I go to some Coursera course, or I watch TED Talks, or I read books very voraciously, or I take reverse mentoring, et cetera. So this is a lifelong journey for me. And I preach the same thing to my team. And I'm asking them, hey guys, you have to learn. And here are the enablements. So we put a bunch of online courses for them. And we have got professors from universities like Yale to come and take lectures around the world remotely, uh, you know, it's like a webcast. And of course, this new institute, it's an MBA standard course over 12 weeks that we are doing. So I can totally empathize with what you are saying. And it's, I think it, the need is uh, dramatic. And I think as far as I'm concerned, once you experience the convenience of remote learning, I think you are stuck with it in a very quick way because you discover the joys of it, right? Now, the uh, other point I wanted to ask you, uh, Roman, specifically is the aspect of trust. Uh, in a country where, uh, or actually in a world, I would not say a country, in a world which is surrounded by distrust and mistrust. If you look at media, you don't know which media to believe. The exact same information or event is interpreted diametrically opposite by two, two different channels. So depending on whether you're watching this channel or this channel, you might, your takeout might be takeaway might be completely different. You cannot trust, you know, there is a mistrust around the world about politicians. There is a mistrust about companies that they are manipulative. Marketing also has a little bit of a bad rap saying that these guys are manipulators, maneuvers, and they are actually uh, trying to make you do things that you otherwise don't want to do or not good for you to do and so on and so forth. So when there is an enormous amount of trust deficit, building a trusted brand is an absolutely, uh, what you call uh, uh, a beneficial thing for any company to do, but not an easy thing to do. Uh, and what I want to ask you are two questions, first Roman and then uh, Karan after that, which is from a trust building point of view, what drives trust uh, as far as your platform is concerned, as far as your audiences are concerned? If you can just share some insight into that, because at a very philosophic level, everyone talks of the same thing. But what you see is that some companies are much better trusted and believe it or not, 85% of the brands that consumers use they actively and wholeheartedly distrust them. So you got barely 15% of the brands which are trusted to some extent and very few brands where consumers will say, I trust this brand with my life. So on against that backdrop, if you can give me your perspective and uh, thought around how you view trust in the context of your own business and how do you look at uh, investing to grow it? Sure. So uh, trust is like a, like one of our cardinal values at an academy, as you rightly said that uh, you can like most of the people don't trust the brands, even though they use it on a day to day basis. So I'll first start from the perspective of educator. Like I just remember it is just COVID uh, just like one, one and a half years ago. And uh, like uh, for educators, like most people don't do it. Like uh, as we have launched T-Sops at that time, uh, just before COVID, we had launched insurance for all our educators. So like we, we never knew that COVID will come and actually like it will become such a huge need, but on our own proactively, uh, like we said, Hey guys, you, like we are partners and uh, like uh, we want this journey to be fruitful for all of you. So I don't do when your entire family gets a insurance cover from us and it costed us a lot. So we just, every single educator at an academy who was teaching, and this is nothing to do with COVID. That's what I'm saying again and again. So we just gave them that cover and like a lot of, I got a lot of messages, hundreds of messages with like, with the tear emojis and like, uh, key, like we have never seen that we have been teaching for last 20 years. We've been teaching for the last 15 years and so on. Secondly, like at that time when, uh, like, uh, when people were having issues, like either they were sick, I'm talking about like, uh, April to June of this year, either they were sick or someone had passed away in their family. Uh, like few of our educators also passed away at that time, like, uh, for one or two months, we had just released their payments, even though they were not teaching. Like uh, we just said, Hey guys, we know that you need us and uh, we just help them as much as we can. I tried to get them into hospitals and uh, it was chaos, but we tried our best to do whatever we can. So at educator side, like we always believe in the principle of paying it forward. Uh, we, we truly believe that if we give them the best possible, like as I told you, T-stops, health insurance, paying them when they are in need, like, uh, we even give them like all the policies are extended to our uh, like team members, employees, like maternity leave of six months, uh, paternity leave. All this is also extended to our educators. Uh, so that, that creates a lot of trust. We put them on our billboards. We are not scared of you like putting their faces out, thinking that they will become big. So we start with trust first. So you have to like pay it forward. You can't expect them to trust you and like uh, do other things. 
when it comes to learners uh, like we have always believed in absolute transparency uh, like uh, we always on board the best possible educators to them everything is clear to them on day one we conduct a lot of free classes it's not that Uh, we don't put a gun to your head like uh, we absolutely abhor and despise uh, miss selling in our team like there is absolutely zero miss selling at an academy and we are really proud of it uh, proud of this fact uh, uh, it's not the case with uh, like uh, the other players in the market we keep hearing news so we have to ensure that there is absolutely uh, like learners trust us blindly that we will not let, leave them in between as i was saying earlier also that their exams got postponed and their subscription one year subscription was ending we just extended it by one month two month three months depending on the case by case basis we taught them for hundreds of hours extra but we never asked them ki let you also pay us for next three months and we try to help them as much as we can if someone is asking for refund for some cases we just refund them we don't ask too many questions so it's always like uh, we follow amazon's principle uh, to certain extent that we are absolutely obsessed about them like gamification is done for them uh every single thing is done uh by keeping learner first in mind so yeah trust is very very important because if you go back to the start of the interview the aim is that an academy outlives us and for that it has to be a relevant brand after let's say 60 70 years i hope i am alive by then so yeah so at least for 60 70 years it should be there and you can't like uh, do short term things uh, and trust is like the fundamental tenet of uh, it outlasting us yeah Awesome, awesome. Uh, Karan, any thoughts from your side? Yeah, uh, I I think uh, there are there are multiple aspects to this, uh, Raja. I think one, uh, uh, you know, I would like to start off by saying, you know, consumers aren't fools. Uh, they can see through stuff very very clearly. Uh, you know, they they watch it, they understand, and they know it. Uh, so. Uh, i think honesty plays a huge role in every communication you roll out uh, and and you know what your promise is to the consumer uh, to the learner to the student uh, in the form of your marketing campaign in the form of a brand communication is it honest is it true uh, if it isn't uh, then you don't put it out there so i think honesty plays a huge role that's that's point 1 uh, for me uh, you know they see through everything uh, the best thing to do like roman said you know transparency honesty plays a huge role uh, the second thing is touch points uh, you know you look at uh, I, i would like to take uh, example of nike and apple over here uh, every touch point you know whether you walk into the retail stores uh, whether you're experiencing the product online whether you see a brand communication or a simple design creative right i think touch points are very crucial so every time you communicate something the the, the communication that's going out uh, at at those various touch points be it physical be it digital be it any form of communication that's being rolled out i think that consistency uh, through those touch points and the quality of communication is very critical uh um, you know lastly uh, i think every time we make an action or a move uh you know at uh, at an academy we always gauge the short term uh you know we you look at the short term game gains short but what's the long term damage that comes into play so you know we weigh the two and then take a calculative uh, you know call towards everything that we roll out so i think it's like like roman also you know uh, hinted at it's about the long term play it's about leaving a legacy behind uh and and that can only be done when there is trust you know rightly like you asked about uh you know in, in your question and that can be built with honesty it can be built with transparency it can be built with the various touch points you have with the con- consumer and and uh, you know the kind of communication you're rolling out how true it is uh because they're not fools they see through everything absolutely i think that's one of the biggest mistakes that companies and marketers in particular make they think that consumers are idiots they are not they can see through you they can sniff you out from a mile away Yeah. and uh so the truth the honesty the transparency the consistency i think all these are absolutely very very critical i want to really sincerely thank both of you what you are building is absolutely amazing and being a lifelong learner myself and i have healthy respect for learning and i practice what i preach uh what you're doing i applaud you for that and you're actually creating a movement bringing learning uh and access to learning uh to millions and millions of people already in india and around the world So congratulations and wish you the very best of luck an absolute pleasure and delight chatting with both of you thank you very much roman and karan thank, thank you raja it was uh, amazing to talk to you as well